Got it. Okay. Is uh public Thanks comments for throwing the thing into the chat window. Any any uh public comments? We have received none. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, third agenda items always traditionally following the bylaws after our uh, annual meeting, the, the board meeting after is the uh, board officers vote. And our three positions are um, chair, treasurer, and secretary. And I'll, uh, I guess we'll go in order. I'll open the floor for nominations for chair. I nominate Mike Abadi if you're willing to serve. You seem to be doing okay. Uh, thanks, CJ. Um, I, I will. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to serve another year. Um, we'd need a second for that. I'll second it. And uh, Dave seconds. Uh, discussion or call a vote. Sounds like discussion is. No. Well, I'm just glad we have a All those in favor of uh, Michael Body continuing as chair for another season, please indicate need, by saying aye. We need a about time in the officer's position. Thank well, you, one and all. Um, uh, next up is treasurer's position. Um, I can't nominate, but I would. Uh, CJ is presently treasurer. Um, and is there a nomination afoot for? Oh, yeah, Jessica's joining us. We're well into quorum territory. Hey, welcome, Jessica. Hello. Thanks for making it. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you fine. Great, and we hear Thanks you as you. well. We're uh, on agenda item three. Um, nominations for board officers always happens uh, the meeting after the annual meetings. So it's this very meeting and we're in the midst of it. So welcome um, to our democratic process. Um, the floor is open for nominations for treasurer. I continue to nominate CJ. I think CJ, you've been doing a good job. And I don't know if you're willing to keep keep doing that job, but it would be great if you did. All right. Thank you, uh, Carlos. Uh, nomination for CJ to continue on as treasurer. Uh, we need a second. I'll second that. Thank you, Chad. Uh, we've got a nomination and a seconding. And we've got a continued willingness, CJ. If you're willing to have me. It sounds like uh, we've got at least two. We want to call the, call the vote. Um, yeah, no, thanks for stepping in. It's been a, um, a, a you're, you're one year in. Um, so all of those in favor of... Uh, CJ, remaining our treasurer, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And aye. oppose. And that's unanimous. Congrats, CJ. Um, secretary, I believe, is uh, Rachel Muse has been the official. She had to step down, I believe, in April. And Chad has been uh, graciously uh, filling in. And, um, and doing a really great job. Yeah, the minutes have I've been, been impressed. really <laughs> tolerable. Um, That's a problem. But we do need job. a nomination, a seconding, and uh, and the willingness on the part of the person. So, Chad, would you be willing to accept the nomination of you? Um, it's a tough job, I know, but you have been amazing. Yeah, I mean... I, I have gotten more used to it. I, I would I would be fine doing it, I guess. I know that's not it. <laughs> that might be enough. I think that's enough. <laughs> or you could say, is there anybody jonesing to do the job? Yeah, if there's someone else who really wants to, I will absolutely not 
that would not hurt my feelings at all. Um, but I know it's not the position everyone's craving for. No. It's crucial for well-run country company and you've been doing an amazing job. And it does sound quiet in terms of other interests. Um, so the floor is open to nominations. I'll nominate Chad. <laughs> All right, David. I'll second. David's nominated yeah, CJ as second. Never we do, do have some willingness on record. And uh, no. I will. I, I second it, but I'm going to say a but and an and. And. This job should be only for rotated for one year, like the year after he's relieved their relieved of their duties. That oh, way it's good, yeah. right? Because it, I did it for a few years. Mm. Not one. I, I did it for a few. But I, I did it a while too, and it is it is um it's yeah it's definitely tricky to participate in the meeting and take uh -huh. minutes. Correct. Yeah. So I you know, I, I would say, you know, as a caveat, I think we should that position should be filled for a year and that's it. The person retires from that moves on to somebody else. That way somebody's obligated to jump in and, and take on that function. It is not easy. Mm -hmm. That also provides coverage if the person happens Correct. to be out yeah. and there are other people who are familiar yeah. with it in the future. Correct. So I second. All right, great. Um, all those in favor of uh, uh, Chad becoming the uh, official secretary for a year, Oh, um, <laughs> all those in favor say aye. And opposed is quiet. All right. Uh, unanimous consent across the board. Thank, thank you, you, everyone, for such a smooth process. You for your service, Chad, really. Thank Great you. gratitude. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. With a lot of gratitude. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess I will just note that... Um, Oh, it's a little confusing. Our annual meeting in the bylaws says ought to be May because of COVID. It became September for a few years. Um, and then our our election of officers is 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 tied to being the meeting after the annual meeting, the board meeting after the annual meeting. So um, we're looking at an odd probably June uh, revote, but then we'll be in our normal rhythm. So we're just we got that weird COVID hitch still in our our. Um, annual rhythm here but for another time let's get back to october 24th 2023 um oh. we've got to approve the august minutes uh august 29th minutes and uh everyone should have that in front of them either virtually or on paper and uh as yeah an, a, another testament to uh, chad's the quality work he's done as secretary if people could just take a minute and uh, check out without actually, you know, commenting on the content, we're just looking for accuracy typos um, and, and, and keep it to that. We're, we're approving the minutes. If something jogs your mind, it would be for old business. Uh, so it is, I, I find my mind always saying, Oh yeah, that, Oh yeah, that, but we're just, just purely uh, reading for accuracy. Um, and I'll go quiet so everyone can do that.
Yeah, I'll take any fixes or, or uh, motions to accept as we get through. Move to accept. Motions. I second. Okay, great. Sounds like a very clean uh, minutes. Um, all those in favor of accepting these uh, August minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Can you guys remind me of a motion to approve it and add second it? Um, CJ, motion to approve it. I second. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, sh I should underline that in the calling I, questions. I would like to say that my last name is spelled with an O-R instead of an E-R oh. for future recommendations. Oh, yeah, yeah. If they can spell a body correctly, they should be able to spell Connor correctly. <laughs> you don't have enough vowels in your last name. Um, <laughs> Mm. But Mike, you got mine. I've only got one. That's right. Yeah, you're consonant heavy. Um, so, uh, Chad, you got the the motion and the seconding. Yes. And I guess I'll, I'll recall that question. Uh, question. All those in favor of accepting the August minutes, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. And approved. Much appreciated, everyone. Uh, moving to the financial reports for agenda item five. That would be uh, Gen CJ combo. Um, in, uh, whichever order you please. Ben stepped out to uh, handle the pizza kerfuffle that oh. was going on. Oh, so. dear. Okay. <laughs> in that case, um, if uh, the easiest thing, am I the only person that's really in remotely? We have six participants, but oh, Pat and Jessica, Hi, you guys are in. I'm late. I'm sorry. Oh, no, hey, no, Jeff, you're good. Pat, thanks for joining us. No, I'm I just completely lost track of time. Not any, not even a good excuse. No, that's okay. <laughs> did you did you pick up that we're just starting? Um, yes. Financial reports. Yep. Yes, I got. Thank you. Item okay. item five. Uh, yes, thanks, CJ. The floor is yours. All right. So um, I've got a request, which is, Jin, are you host? Jin's oh, not no, here. Jin's out. All right. Who's our host? Um, Jin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> In that case, I'll just read you the uh, treasurer's report. I was going to try to share my screen. Um, oh. The, oh, gotcha. Uh, no, it's all good. This is It's not complicated. Yeah. It just would be sort of fun and slick. Bear with me one second. And um, so this is as of uh, October 12, 2023, um, our funds and our cash slash liquid investments are safe and growing modestly. Our fund investments are unchanged. They're still American funds. They're up a few percent year to date, not awful, but I continue to think we can and should do better uh, on the money markets and CDs, positive news, laddered CDs report. As you know, Orca decided to transfer from Orca's bank account at less than 1% to our Edward Jones account, where we invested in a money market and laddered CDs, meaning that they mature every three months uh, so that there's always this you know, investment and then yield in case we needed that money because this is our short-term push. And so they mature every three months. They all went in at approximately 5%. Our first laddered CD is matured and... Uh, it and, the, and, the, and then in addition to that, the money market's still doing well. The one that matured was 25,000, paid 5.35%. So in those three months, it made $337.12, which is about $300 over what we were doing before. The remaining laddered CDs are at 5.3%, 4.75%, and that was a discount purchase price. So we get some additional bucks when it matures and 5.3%. Uh, CD rates are currently as of 10, 12 at about uh, well, what's available through Edward Jones is 5.45% for a one year and 5.5 on a nine month. However, rather than rolling it into another laddered CD, uh, we opted to shift Orcus funds into a money market at 5.25% uh, because it looks like the Fed's going to raise rates they're due to meet in a week or so. So our money market was 4.98%. 
there was another better one available at 5.25. So $63,112.94 went into something called DWF, Government Money Market Fund, at 5.25%. Presumably, all your eyes are now glazing over. Basically, all I'm saying is our cash equivalents are doing fine. Um, the reason for going into a money market rather than jumping into one of those CDs is that uh, there's another rate hike in the short term, but the long term outlook is for rates to begin to start to drift down. So it may be a good time to look at bonds instead of CDs because corporate bonds are paying 6%. They'll pay that for you know 15 years. And in addition, bond values normally, normally, this is weird period, but normally would go up as rates come down. So in addition to the 6%, we would get an increase in the bond values if that happens. I'll continue to keep the board informed, but not to this level of detail unless the board likes it. So uh, I'll get into our funds really in a shorter report in a moment, but um, but any questions on that? That's great. Good job. Yes, thanks. Okay. All right, on the funds, um, you know, we had a meeting where I, when I was new, um, we asked Edward Jones, Mark Quinn to come in and talk and, um, so at this time, and, and at that time, we opened an account, but we didn't fund it. And the, the account was uh, currently the funds are in what's called the American Funds Group. We pay a fairly large amount of two, like two to four percent upfront to go in. And then the money that's already in can switch between only between American funds, but new investments still have that that, you know, upfront charge. So. Um, we uh, had Mike Doyle, the outgoing treasurer, and I had met with Mark Quinn and with the board, and uh, we're getting messages that that new account we set up will close unless we take action. So I thought it would be helpful to take a moment to say, what is it and why did we and Mark Quinn feel it was a good idea for ORCA? Um, and so this is the new account we created to allow us to transition to a single fixed upfront charge to allow us to make decisions that don't require we consider only the choices within American Funds Group and each time calculate the cost to ORCA. Um, at the moment, we're locked into American Funds family, which is not a bad family at all. Uh, we pay a much bigger upfront charge and then we can trade the money that's already invested within American Funds without further costs. But Mark, when, when I talked with him last week, cautioned that even then we still pay American Funds some internal expense and they pay Edward Jones some portion of that. So. You know, there's no free lunch. Uh, changing to the new account, just a reminder, the recommendation was made to allow us to make investment decisions based on what's best for ORCA and without needing to constantly also calculate fund costs. Uh, no single fund family has all the best all the time. And so, um, uh, you know, that's my report respectfully submitted. Um, and uh, it's just a quick uh, summary to the board about why that recommendation exists. Um, we're safe where we are. Uh, we probably could do better with this change and uh, it's not going to make a, you know, a giant difference either way. So uh, if the board still feels that this swap into a new thing is, is uh, a good thing to do. Um, I'd appreciate your, it's, you know, it's not required, but I would appreciate your, your vote of, of, uh, your motion or your, um, you know, your sort of your endorsement of that. And we can do either one, stay where we are, move to this thing that gives us some more flexibility, but with a fixed upfront cost. Go ahead, Pat's got a hand. Yeah, Mike, I'm sorry. I, um, could you just tell me again, sorry, it's a little hard to process. The new account, it's easier to change money because there's, we it's don't a managed worry about account, essentially. Oh, right. Okay. It's a different vehicle it. that Edward Jones set, set up. So the original one was set up, what, like maybe 15 or 16 years ago by uh, our former treasurer yeah. who was with the company, Orca, since its inception. Mike Doyle was here for oh, from Mike, the very right. beginning. Right. Yep. So um, a terrific guy and really helped hold my hand through the transition. So this is a managed account and that's what's, um, okay, got it. Exactly. That, that. Word, that yep. word I know. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> right. <laughs> yep. The new, um, the upfront cost is only 1% too on the new, on the switch over. Is that correct from memory? That's correct. Exactly. From memory, I would 
recheck everything just because you know things change but it you know i have not heard of any changes from uh mark when he just said they're going to close this account unless we do something yeah i had some 60 day kind of use it or lose it thing so we're still within it and you're thinking maybe maybe move in move into some bonds and start doing what we've talked about or yep uh, okay. The bonds Great. are more likely to happen in the cash account, just to, but both of them are eligible and we're already in some bonds right now. So yep. it's just a, an opportunity to rebalance or to re, you know, to modify our investments based on current market conditions with a little bit more flexibility. And a higher it's, percentage, correct? You said 6%? Uh, on not, the... Not. Yeah, I mean, we continue to have uh, some funds that were more stock equity based, yeah. and yeah. then we would continue to have a large percentage of bonds, but move into some of the bonds that are emerging now as interest rates are at for you know pretty much record highs from the last what is it ten? That's encouraging. I do have a question. That uh, would be uh, Carlos. Yes. Um, so I do know, like in news recently, like the bonds are getting a hit right now at this moment. Right, like you know, everybody's looking at the bonds because right now it's it's right. it's getting hit a little bit hard. Is what does what do they say in terms of that, Edward Jones? Uh, they say past results are no predictor of future performance. <laughs> 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 um, they, you know, they dance a little bit, but uh, what no? What Mark actually said is. Uh, interest rates have been raising that tends to put downward pressure on the value of bonds including our bond portfolio right because it was purchased you know when uh, so and then he he said that the general feeling is that the fed will probably do one more rate hike when they meet what is it next week uh you know soon and then the you know the general predictions are that things will probably start to drift down and so at that point taking advantage of some of these higher interest rate corporate bonds, which if things behave in that, mm-hmm. in that area that where the, in the old saw, whereas interest rates go down, the value of bonds with higher interest payouts go up, right? Naturally, because now you, if you wanted to get new bonds, you would get bonds that paid less. Right. Whereas the old bonds that are paying more get they actually themselves increase in value. It's not just the interest payments. So his thought was it should be a good time to consider um, possibly reinvesting some of the cash equivalents even into bonds rather than to uh, mm-hmm. uh, CDs. And I, I personally, just so you know, um, what I'd be inclined to do is to call Jen, check in with the uh, the direct the officers to make sure that that is consistent with their predictions for the future. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, other okay. other questions for CJ? And then there's, uh, is, is has Jen returned to do the sort of in-house side of the financials? Yes, yeah. sorry. Yeah, pizza there, so she's the hero. She went to get food for us. Okay. And as a side note, in the chat, I put the link to the financial report that CJ had emailed. So if you all wanted to take a look at what was read, it's there. For you. And I also put it in the board um, folder for this meeting as well. So and in terms of the financials, I think um, we also talked about it in the co-directors report. So I will also just kind of quickly go through if there were any the major notes that um, to keep an eye out for is that I think our website project is going to be is going to definitely be over budget, and it is that um, due to the traffic on our website, it's bumped us into a higher like paying position because there's more people coming to it theoretically, and so that's where that new amount is hitting us, and so I think um, it's. It may be true traffic, it may be miscellaneous traffic, but it will take a little bit more time to like dig deep into where the traffic source is coming from. So right now it just, the hosting group is like, you're just, you're getting this much traffic. So you're in this new tier and that's where the amount is higher. And so we'll expect it to be over budget just because it was much higher. And um, that's 
And I think on term, in terms of health insurance also, um, and it's written in the co-director's report too, but we, the initial budget was put with cash in lieu of benefits. And so that amount was shown up in compensation. But since then, um, staff, one staff member went to our health insurance. So now is on our health bill. And so now that it's getting, we're paying for that rather than paying it in cash. So what it is, is that the monies are just shifting out of the compensation line into the health insurance and dental insurance line. So that's where it shows up as being over budget for health insurance and dental, but that's primarily just that compensation will be less. So outside of that, I think um, the accounting fees are also a little bit higher just because we got the bill for the tax return and it was, whether it was higher than expected, it was higher than we budgeted. So that's, I think, the only bit also. So that's just the current budget reports that we've got. And I guess if there's any questions about it. Uh, do we do things the way the other organizations in VAN do it? Or are we doing something a little bit different because of Edward Jones? So in terms of the budget, I think our, we generally have not really used any of the say or the interest from the investment accounts to put into the budget. I mean, we did a little bit this year. And so I don't know if that's a new trend that is done in terms of us. I think that if I remember the year before Rob left, I think he when listening to old meetings that it was something that he was bringing in, like using the capital gains and some of the savings money. Um, and he was doing that for that particular budget. And we've kind of done it not nearly as much, just like, I think generally we used a little bit saying we couldn't make our budget come out to zero without saying, could we pull some from the savings to kind of cover that deficit? And so whether that's how the other groups do it, I was most curious know, about yeah, yeah. The, the the higher echelon of website charges. Oh, so yeah. So that That's part, I think that website cost is also the group that we're using was part of what Rob, like the, I think a lot of the access groups do a cooperative for the website development and the website platform. And so the company that they've chosen to use as the website hoster is this group. And so we've just kind of joined up with them. And so we didn't necessarily shop around to say, who's the web poster that's going to offer the cheapest rates. And that might be something to do in the upcoming year, but it may be that depending, I think there was also this idea of kind of swapping platforms in from what we currently use to something that a lot of the other organizations are using because they all kind of joined up. So that may be that, um, it's whether that how that falls out in terms of cost savings for us i'm not quite sure i know that it was something that rob had like been involved in and we kind of were part of it and whether it will still make sense and i feel like that's something in next year that would be a like to look and see you know what exactly are we getting from joining this cooperative and is it really helping with our website or is it the fees too much for what they're doing. And I think that cooperative is also going through some transition. And so they're rethinking of how to provide service and things like that. So I think we're in it with the other access groups on, there's a bunch more access groups that are using that same website platform, mm -hmm. but um, how, if it's it makes sense for us or not, I'm not quite sure. And I think it may be, what I'm hoping is that once there's time to really dig in to see where is all this traffic coming from, is it really true traffic to our website, right. that we might be able to pull right. some of that out and talk with the hoster and be like, that's not really traffic, we'd like it to be taken out. But it is, I think, a bunch of time to like look at logs and see where things are coming from. And it isn't something that we had time this year maybe to do, but it's definitely one of those where it's shifted us and we're like, oh, well, we need to this definitely a lot of money being paid for website. So we definitely want to look at it and see if we can reduce that cost. And so- Well, just for one humble board member, well, I, no. was, I was really glad that people wanted to go to our website. And, and then I realized there was a downside to that. 
which was yeah. we don't know who they oh, all are. They may be costing us more money than we want to pay. Mm -hmm. So it's the good news, bad news, and I can't figure out where's it's what's the how you get in the middle. We're hoping that it's good news and all of that will turn out to be real traffic, which then it's like it makes sense for us to pay it and whether you know the amount that we're paying for it makes sense. But if it turns out to be not real traffic. Okay. Then it's like, but I mean, we were expecting and we were hoping that all the work that we're doing to do like the forums yeah. and the press conference, like it was true traffic that we're seeing. Well, and some of them, like us. And some of them. got mean, a hand up. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Hey, Jen, um, this group you're talking about, this cooperative, is that a group that meets? And are you at the table with them so that these discussions are happening as a group? So is, I think in, yeah, I had similar. Is this a creature of van? Right. I, I'm curious of the the build the building of that cooperative. Right. So the cooperative was, I think, a function like they. It's something that Rob was really involved in or like part of. And whether it was like it, it seemed to me, and my understanding of it is the group that normally like managed our website yeah. was the same group that managed a lot of, of the other access centers website and so that's why so many of the access centers look the same um so then they decided like so they're like oh we do all this stuff so we're going to just make this cooperative and we just kind of fell in with it and so we haven't fully embraced the cooperative where they're doing they as a cooperative they came up with this whole new platform to try to make it easier for all the access centers and make a community of access centers and mm -hmm. their website but then it we were just kind of trying to get to a point where we we're going to transfer all our web data over to them and it seemed like they weren't really responsive and i think that's one of the things that they're working on now is that they've got some service delivery issues where they're not and so i was a little hesitant to like really move everything over just because the times that i've tried to interact with them i didn't get a lot of response and so i was like yeah. if there's troubles i'm a little bit nervous about having it all there and not really right. being able to get responses back whereas yeah. here we kind of we know how our website is not the best and it doesn't work exactly the way we would ideally want it to, but we can manage it enough so that if there's problems, we can kind of work around. Whereas that new yeah. platform is so managed by them that it really isn't something that I was like, oh, well, and then all this other trouble happened with them in terms of they're like, okay, well, it's not quite, there's, I guess, you know, now that they're looking, relooking governance and their service delivery, I'm like, okay, well, maybe that's by next year, we'll really tackle that website and see if it's ready to move it over. Because I think ideally what they were presenting sounds great, but I, it's just, I was, I was waiting to hear and see. And so this, even like when I reached out to them to say, hey, what's, you know, what's the next step? What does it look like? I didn't necessarily get a response. So that's why I was like, okay, let's just wait. And then when they were like, all oh, this is being talked about and I was like, okay, I'll just keep waiting. And that's why I think next year might be the year where we can, you know, hopefully those service delivery issues are resolved and then we'll be ready to like transition to them. And yeah, what's the name, of, what is the name of that entity you're speaking Localize? of? Localize? Yeah, so, so they there was an app, they were pitching like the, the next big thing. Yeah. And it's eyes like eyes that you have. I remember it was a little mm -hmm. pun there. And yeah, yeah, I remember them pitching and I don't I didn't I didn't know where that went, but it's they mm -hmm. now host our our and many other pegs websites. Well, what it is, so it's like they're the organization that manages the the people, the website hosters that are managing the servers and the traffic. And that's what got that's what ended up being more expensive than we expected is Pantheon. And so they recommended that we move all, like we use Pantheon and then the localize is the platform that interacts with the server and does the website. So without Pantheon, like they are just kind of like the wrapper around it. And Pantheon just determines how many people are hitting our sites. And they're like, okay, this is how much traffic we're moving to your server. So this is how much it's going to cost. And so localize was, like they would just like they were developing a content management systems and it's a bigger than that that would allow us you know with our pages and and manage our website but that's still on top of just like the server stuff that's just doing the mechanics of it i don't know if that made sense mm -hmm. so that's where it's twofold like we haven't quite moved over to the localized and i'm sure that and in, in the new budget 
we did put in some so that if we go to their their app or their their wrapper, that there's going to be some fees attached to it. So we haven't experienced those fees yet. This the new amount is just website hosting fees and traffic that comes to it and how they determine what tier we're in. <laughs> so um and you can see actually again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to add, it would, I, we can share the website and you can see like all of the groups that are using it. It's inter It's all over the Northeast. It's not just, but it is a the Burlington group. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems to me that uh, it, it sh conceptually, it should be the same in all of the, um, um, the ORCA type uh, entities because you should be able to go one to the other and but if I bet other, if you're not if we're not happy, I bet others are not happy as well. So how do they get feedback from people that are paying? So they, uh, that's the service delivery issue that I was talking about. So they came out right. with a letter saying that I think the current head had stepped down because there wasn't and they were going to rethink how to manage the service issues. Right. Okay. So that's why I was like, you know, maybe we'll just wait till all that sh shuffling okay. kind of resolves. But I think that was, you know, at, I think it was at the Brooklyn conference where they had like a group and then they got a bunch of feedback from a bunch of people that were using oh, it. And they, that was the letter that was responding to the feedback that they received at the Brooklyn oh. conference. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, really complete. More questions for Jen? Uh, or accept a, a motion to accept the financial reports or more thoughts at 714. Oh, uh, Jen, are we um, awaiting one last quarterly check or did we just receive it or where are we in the pattern? We are waiting one last quarterly check. And I think Thank that's, um, I'm trying to remember when we're expecting it. Pretty, pretty soon it'd be, huh? I think so. I feel like this December's hitting me, but um, Checking the mobile. No, it's not in the oh, mail right a, now, though. I kind of remember December last year. Yeah. Okay. November, December. Okay. There are new neighbors with Abby feet over there. Mm -hmm. The dancing. They're all around us. They're above us. And oh, yeah. Us. yeah. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, right. Yeah. Recording. Yeah. <laughs> so far, it hasn't been a problem. Yeah. Yeah. They make popcorn every oh, time. It's it's going home for dancing. Yeah. Like, I'm holding. Yeah. Hold for recording. Um, so are we just waiting for a motion to accept? I think or? we're just waiting for a motion to accept them. Yeah. I, or, or are people scrutinizing that budget for okay. re really good nitty gritty? Or I'll accept that motion to accept uh, financial reports. I'll make yeah. the motion. To accept. Thank you, Pat. Pat is uh, moved to accept the financial reports. I'm going to second it. And I heard Carlos. I heard uh, Carlos on the seconding. Yep. All those in favor of accepting the financial reports, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed is quiet. Uh, so that's unanimous acceptance of the financial reports. Thank you so, CJ and Jim for thorough and clear reporting out. Uh, moving us to co-directors report, I think Chris takes the lead on this, correct? Yeah, um, I, will, I will go through this. Um, so lots of things happening. Um, we're just gonna give a little highlight from each section here. Um, so if you take a look <clears throat> under production, we in addition to every other, you know, regular uh, production at Orca Media. We've been doing some special events and the one that was particularly interesting, the Taste of Montpelier just happened, which was also the reopening 
uh, party and uh, celebration, I think they called it. Um, so there's some great videos on YouTube of juggling and acrobats and all of the fun things that happen on Langdon Street. Um, in the outreach uh, category, we're really ramping up the work with the Green Mountain Film Festival. Um, we hired a programmer and a sponsorship manager um, through the Green Mountain Film Festival as independent contractors, and they're really great. And there's a lot of things moving forward with that. So stay tuned. Um, let's see. So I think uh, under strategic plan, we were hoping to confirm in-person um, attendance. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it under the strategic planning update agenda item. But just to remind you all that it's the board retreat is coming up Tuesday, November 14th, four to seven. And um, we could do that now, just if, if you all have your calendars in front of you, we could do an in-person in confirmation. Um, so yeah, we just, um, we are hoping everyone can make it in person. We feel like the retreat would probably work the best if everyone was in person. So we just wanted to highlight that part. I mean, but of course, if you can't, let us know and we'll try to make accommodations. Yeah, but. Exactly, yeah. yeah, and this date did not fall out of the sky. We nailed it down last meeting and there was good, yeah. um, it looked good for people. Um, but again, can you repeat yeah. again the date? Tuesday, November 14th. Four to seven. Okay. Here. We'll be here? Okay. Yep. Dave will be here. That's we're having pizza. Or pizza. Oh, there'll be there'll be pizza, brownies, everything. Yeah. Maybe, Coffee. maybe we'll maybe we'll upgrade for from pizza. Yeah. Ooh. No upgrade from pizza. <laughs> yeah. For for you know, strategic planning yeah, meeting. Three sandwiches. hours. Yeah, yeah, we might need two meals. We see something green, like a le <laughs> piece of lettuce, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing healthy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I could I could be there at fourteen. Okay, so in person, I can in person. Yes. Yeah. Me too. So, yeah, yeah, I will kind be of there the message is do your me. best to be in person is for the fourteenth. Yeah. And if if um you do need uh remote accommodations, just reach out to the uh. The co directors, please. So, what would be great for that for that meeting is I had a time ask Nathan, do we need to prep in one way? Sure, so, we'll mention that in just a second here. So, let's uh, we'll just move through the co directors right. report and then during the strategic planning update. Yes, good question. Um, so under staff and interns, you can see we've hired a new camera operator, and uh, this actually, as of the uh, printing time of this report. There's been uh, three more camera operators on board, uh, onboarding right now. And we have an interview tomorrow, but um, we are still on the search for more camera operators just to get more uh, hens in the barn, I guess we want to, we're saying, it's just so that, you know, the, the more, more hens, the more eggs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's, we have a lot, you know, the demand is heavy on Monday. So that's why it's nice to have a lot of folks to um to 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 use but anyway yeah we have and transportation. and transportation we definitely have a lot of younger folks coming in thanks to carlos uh i think we hired two from the career center which is awesome um yeah so send us your send us your students your family members yeah what cameras are they going to go out with uh the new aries no, just joking. Right. Oh. Right. Can I be there? <laughs> and there's the ones that. 65, the Electro 65. Yeah, yes, like, no, they're uh, going to be using our Canon stock. Yeah. The, the, I'm going to stop by. If I, you know, at some point, if I can borrow one, I can just go over and over in school. Oh, and show them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You can get, get a job. Workshop. You know how to, yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously, we do provide training if you're spreading the, the word among cam, that we're hiring camera operators and we do yeah. train. So, but thank you. Um. So I think well, we'll move on to finances, which we uh, have a little bit of a heavier um, information load here. So uh, we'll mention the 2024 20, budget and I'll let Jen kind of take it away here. And I'm sorry, I had a question before. Please, please, class. yes. So how much how much time is the studio getting getting used here? Alongside members. It's definitely 
underutilized mm -hmm. still. I think that we have, uh, if you all don't know this already, our the majority of the interactions and engagement that we get are event coverage requests. Yeah. So outside yeah. of the building, and then um, I would say that that's followed by uh, equipment rentals or equipment borrowing, and then um, yeah. four or five, and then community regular community producers four or five still kind of there. Okay. Yeah. So if you are students. Um, Send them. How did the um, higher ed collaborative find us, or how did that have that? That looks like a good thing a renting of the studio for their own personal. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. There's been a few things like that recently where um, I'm actually on um, something like that happened recently too with a a, lob, a lobbying group that is based out of Montpelier. But uh, they, I'm on a um, development uh fundraising and development list serve for central vermont nonprofits. and every once in a while they'll be like hey does anyone have a camera i can borrow and then i'll immediately respond do you know about orca media and then so i think that's either or one of the other ones and i kind of you know oftentimes they're looking to make little in-house videos training videos um and in that case it, it was a, a training series that they were working with a contractor and all of that and, and Orca's studio kind of was the perfect space. Um, and they're making a contribution. So they're, yeah, they're, they're, it won't be content that we could share, but it'll, it, it's great that they're um, able to make a donation for their, the time that they're using the space. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move to the, the uh, finances, finances section. Okay. So the chunk of the big, the beginning part we went over in the financial reports. I think the main thing is, um, and I didn't exclude it with the other financial reports, but we last year we did a projected budget report. So now that there's only really two more months, what we did was we kind of put in the, you know, the salaries or the compensation amounts. And we're knowing like at the end of the year is generally when we do our big um, purchases in equipment. So that's where if we say, okay, so the equipment budget for the most part for the year ends up being super below budget, but then in November, December, we start to look at where are we going to phase out and then Zach brings in his plan. And so generally we see that budget line hit at the end. So what we did is we just kind of did a projected for the next two months and where would we theoretically kind of stand and in this year's budget. So we're looking good, we're on target. We're a little bit like about 2000 below um, our revenue or so we're not with the budget because the budget actually has a deficit. But if we were to just look at our revenue or income against our expenses, we are we're under our expenses are under what we're bringing. So we're doing OK, I think. Um, so that's just kind of from bringing back a report from previous. So then the main thing is since Generally, December is when the budget for the next 2024 gets voted. We thought we'd give you a rough draft mm -hmm. so that you can start thinking about it and how we're thinking about it. And if there's questions or if you want us to make adjustments, we have some time before it gets voted in. So it's not a big surprise in December. So that's what the 2024 budget draft is. And in our co-directors, I listed out some assumptions or some some assumptions that went into making this budget so then it would be whether you know if there was any issues with any of those assumptions that we're happy to make adjustments so the first one is we did put in a three percent cola for everyone so it's um it's for all full-time staff as well as camera operators when they hit their year mark if they're past the probationary period um so then i think Last budget, we uh, we did a 3% COLA and a 3% inflation bonus that would just be for this year, just or for the 2023 year, because inflation was so high when we presented it. So we took that 3% inflation bonus out and put in, and so then we did the 3%. So really, like for full-time staff, our, our compensation will be the same. Um, and so that we won't actually experience any change in our our gross pay, but it is essentially a 3% increase. And that's 
So that's kind of a little bit funky, but we just wanted to make sure that it was transparent that that 3% inflation that we said it was just for a year that we did take it out this year because we felt like inflation was okay. And then the other bit is, is we did notice that we are spending a lot more on camera operators. We're doing more events. We're doing, I think we're trying to do higher quality events. So we're doing multiple cameras and switching. So our camera operator hours, so we have like a little sub budget that we pull in about where we estimate how many hours we're thinking we're going to be using for camera operators. And so that actually for this year has been increasing and it's over what we initially budgeted. So this year we added more to that budget so that we would have ample staff to be able to send to the state house to send to like, I think when we did the forums, like all seven, you know, we had seven cameras out there. And so that those were events that we didn't back in 2023, didn't budget. We just kind of said, we're doing municipals. We might do some more, but we did notice that especially, and I think we're trying to do graduations with multi-camera so that it looks a little bit better. So with those pieces, we did increase our compensation line for the camera operators um, so that we did have enough money in there to kind of be able to do that. So I think what you'll see is that even though the compensation line for 2024, like numerically is lower than the budget for 2023, that 2023 does have that cash in lieu of benefits amount that we were offering. So that's where, and so it actually is, even though numerically it doesn't look like we're asking for more, we are actually asking for more in compensation just because that cash in lieu will show up in the health insurance. So now our health insurance, amount is way more than what we budgeted last year because they are all staff is on the on the health insurance plan now. So that's where a couple of things that are a little bit like just looking at the numbers, it doesn't quite tell the full story. So we just wanted to make sure that we you know put out there that we are looking to increase the compensation in terms of just the number of hours that we're allowed to use. And I think um the other bit is that we included the $10,000 for the audit. And so you'll see at the end, we're still under, like we're presenting a deficit budget of 10,000, just because that 10,000 is the audit budget, 10,000 that we put in this year's budget, which we haven't used. And I figured like the audit is still something we wanna do. So we'll probably put it in there, but we didn't come up with a way to finance it. So it's still like just a deficit budget. Um, on that end. So the other thing to note is we're expecting a decrease in revenue still. Um, and what we did was we took the lowest check that we've received this year and used that to project out for next year. And we are, so the government appropriations, we're expecting a check for 45,000 from the Van Group that, that was from the government appropriations. They, authorize that 1 million amount. And so our portion is 45,000. So even though we're expecting the check in October, like in the next few weeks or beginning part of November, but we would like to use that money toward the 2024 budget rather than have it in the 2023 budget yep. as extra yep. income. So then I think, um, so the, other pieces, I think, you know, it's just an increase in the health and dental insurance. And I think um, I did leave a little bit of the consultants. So this year's budget, 2023, had the strategic planning consultant in it. So I did keep a little extra in case there's like, if we wanted to do like a community assessment or a community needs assessment or something related to the strategic plan that we still might use the consultant for. So I kept a few um a little bit, I think it ended up being like maybe a third of what we budgeted this year for Nathan to keep into this budget. And that's where the consultant amount is a little bit more. It's not quite as much as what it was this year, but it's still not like super less. Um, so I think, and if you want details, if, if you're like, you know what, show us the breakdown of the compensation if you really want to see how much what we're thinking we're happy to provide that we just gave an overview of just across for the year and not broken it out per month so that um it would be 
I think um, easier to digest, but I think outside of that. I was gonna say, do you, do you wanna add that this is also just like a chance to to look at it, think about it, and we're not voting on it or yeah. like, and so if you wanna come back to us a week from now or two weeks and say that you are you need clarity on anything or have an idea for spending a lot of money, um, we have plenty of time. So I, I had a couple questions. <clears throat> so before I, I I may have just written this down wrong. Did you say that one employee had opted for the health insurance, or all the employees had opted and switched to the? So no. Insurance? So there was one employee that was doing cash in lieu of benefits, so they weren't on the health insurance, but now they are. So all three yeah. are on the health insurance now, and that's where the health insurance amount for the 2024 is so much more than the 2023. And so the it's not like a one for one change, like the the same exact monetary amount out of compensation into health insurance. The health insurance is actually more. It's it's, that, um, it's actually less. It's so less. and that's where the compensation this year, when we are talking about how like num numerically we're under budget, but we would we should have been under budget a lot more because of the cash and loan benefit not um, getting used, but because we're over on the camera operators. It hours so far that we're like okay so now we're trying to kind of minim like reduce the so we're trying to maintain and stick to the camera operator budget so we're trying to reduce the amount of hours that the camera operators do so that we hopefully should be more under budget to reflect that cash and lieu that's not there okay does that make sense so it's yeah. it's hard because that cash in lieu was a much higher amount than what's actually being paid out in health insurance and dental insurance okay what would you say is the biggest event that you spend money off that you spent money off in the last season last uh, this the the, the forums? recovery the, the forums, flood yeah. Forums. The forums, yeah. Yeah. yeah but we, we didn't know there was going to be a flood <laughs> and they you know because yeah. those were like so that's so important yeah, yeah. And there were two forums where we had like seven cameras like they because when they did breakout groups we wanted to make sure to cover those so they there was, was like, like yeah, there was ah, well, the one, second, of them, one of them was this guy. Yeah. So there, you know, the first one was all together, but the second and the third, they broke out into breakout groups. Yeah. And so we wanted to make sure that we captured that for them. So for people who couldn't attend. Yeah. So that was a lot more than we expected. Could have been easier if you had had like cameras, smaller cameras for smaller rooms, like a GoPro would stick it in a corner uh, on top of audio. I think it still needed someone to, to, manage. to manage it. Yeah. To, to do the audio and put the camera on. So when you do something that it's big, it's, uh, do they pay you? So we didn't. We just offered it because it was part of like the community yeah. was getting together and yeah. we just wanted to be able to be a part of that. Absolutely. And and so we didn't offer or well, what, we didn't. What I'm driving at. Yes. It was mission driven work. I understand the mission and I understand the generosity and this and also the idea that we're trying to be a good partner but there are other people making claims against fema money mm. because of things that they couldn't do during the post-flood period we haven't asked for anything i assume no not toward but well, that means that a lot of the things that we might have wanted to do such as do things downtown you know or do things even at the state house mm. were cut back because of the flood so, so I, a, a, an argument could be put together that we serve the community and have served the community. The community has been deeply wounded and has been trying to have the forums that we've donated our time and cameras to, and we've donated them, mm -hmm. but that also we've had no, no compensation for all of the different things that were cut short following in the dead time after the, the flood. So I think... It is definitely, we are affected, but I think like, so one of the other things like with COVID, they were offering a, um, the employee retention credit and that was part of like things were adjusted. So I were, I did work with a person to try to get, um, to see if we would qualify. And by saying, you know, our, like we don't have any production revenue really yeah. that reflect that. And that's yeah. where it's kind of hard. And so, because we didn't have production revenue that got affected by COVID, even though our main, like we couldn't go to the meetings, 
where we showed that our business hours and what we could do was was yeah. deeply decreased and we could qualify, but it was a hard push. And it was like, and I think that it would, the person that I work with, they're like, you know, a lot of these cases are getting flagged by the, the IRS to audit and it, because it's hard to prove. And so that's where we have ended up not following through with the employee retention credit because we wouldn't be able to, and they put a hold, IRS put a hold on it, any on a moratorium on that particular credit. But going through and trying to prove like our, our operations were affected, like because our revenue or our production revenue doesn't show that decrease, it's really hard to be like, no, we really were affected okay. and we couldn't do stuff. So I think it's a harder push to try to explain that, even though like we all know, like, you know, we couldn't go out to do these meetings and I'm these sure. events. But I think um, so if we could, I mean, we did look at trying to. And so that I feel like it might fall in that same category with FEMA and trying to show like yeah. to FEMA and trying to get FEMA right. reimbursement. And I'll add that, you know, uh, you'll see here in the next section that Van is uh, putting out a call to to nonprofits and municipalities to support us in our efforts in the state house next year. And that is part of like my selling point too, is, you know, to the city of Montpelier, to the mayor here, to sign the letter, to saying that, you know, that that they support Van's effort because we've been such a critical partner to them and have supported them with our production services, you know, our free production services through the community forums. Well, I would hope that when we do an audit, that we include some of this information, even in the, in the footnotes at the end of the audit, because it shows our integrity and it shows that our books are open and it shows that we have done we've been affected by the by the, the flood and that we're not asking for any compensation but that we want to have our open books be part of the audit yeah yeah and that we're proud of our audit because it's been an honest organization that's given time and lost money without getting any other compensations Mm -hmm. Right. But I mean, I mean, I will add that we, since we don't make money from doing regular meetings and production work, that it, it's hard to argue that we lost money, even if, it, especially even during COVID, then during the flood, which is like a kind no, of no, the same I, I don't need that. Yeah. Well, but the projection of having nine camera operators, you didn't budget. Yeah, you used a higher expense. Mm -hmm. Higher expense than normal. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you reverse engineer, like, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. We ended up spending more money during the flood, yeah. maybe. Because why the audit. Yeah. yeah. Before I think and that argument. I think that argument would work potentially with the SBA because you you've expending more money, and their their whole focus is to communicate. They were on WDEV every other day trying to get people to come to these meetings and to participate. So you've got a good um, a good case for spending more money, not necessarily losing money, but they want you to help educate the people, and you're covering this whole forum is one way to do that for sure. Well, it's worth yeah. it. It's worth an ask. That's not that you're gonna nickel and dime, but the truth is, you know, if you had if you send out 10 cam operators and right. you know whatever whatever, whatever time that was, yeah. like the production itself to, um, right. um, the wear and tear on the gear, sure, yeah. you know, yeah. there's on extra and on. press conferences too. The, the edits, years. the editing time that took the post production time into putting yeah. that into uploading that into the system, the load on the system. I, I mean it I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, and I think that that like, no, no, you're right. To, uh, <clears throat> CJ's point in the in the chat there regarding a grant, I think that that would be a great uh, narrative for a grant application. I don't think uh, Pat that you know we would necessarily be able. I don't think we'd be interested in SBA loan or be interested in. Oh, loan. you don't want to take on more loans. That's no good. Forget no. that. Maybe but a grant. Yeah, I mean that's part of the grant writing is is you know a specific narrative, and I think that that is yeah. that's the story. Yeah, it's a legitimate expense. Will you be you able to argue. Show, compare July August from previous years and see you know is it is was the expense higher? With, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we did get you know I'll add to it in in. Real, and related to the, the letters of support, we did get a letter from Scott Finn, the CEO of Vermont Public, because he also recognized that, you know, uh, Orca Media played a critical role in housing Vermont Public uh, mm -hmm. journalists here, um, uh, in addition to uh, providing the stream, right. once again, 
Yeah. 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 Can I ask Jin um, on the income part? Do, do uh, you have government approves forty five? Uh, I don't want my glasses on forty five thousand. Do you have a commitment from somebody that you jacked it up so much higher? So it's this check is actually I'm coming in October. So oh, so that's a real number. Yeah. So it's actually been. Um, yes. Yeah, it's deposited been, and approved right. by the government. So it was a million dollar ask. That I saw done. the check actually. So Good it's job. A, oh, check. Yeah, it's yeah. So it was deposited by Jess, who's the van Excellent. treasurer. Great. To be dispersed. Somewhat, yeah. somewhat differently than if the last one was dispersed, uh, and it's going to be based on budgets um, of the twenty five four organizations. So we're going to get a little bit more. So I think in looking at how they chose, I think they did like e some of the groups are getting 35,000 and some of the groups are getting 45,000. So we are in the 45,000 group because our budget was higher than some of the ones. So the ones that have lower budgets. So I think they just kind of differentiated it. And I'm not sure what budget number it was that caused it, but it's, you know, some most some groups are 45, some are 35. And so, um, whereas- it's like under 100,000 or over 100,000. Okay, so that's where, and I think in terms of, that's why we wanted to put it into 2024's budget, just because yeah, even though we're- I understand. And why um, on the underwriting and sponsorship income, you have zero for uh, 24. I never quite understand the underwriting and sponsorship um, rules in the public access um, that you can't have sponsors or there's all kinds of rules, are there not? There, I think that there's some, it's like the non-commercial content, but you can be sponsored. So like your show, if you had sponsors right. paid for whatever, that's, you know, you can have a little line that says sponsored by so-and-so. I think we put it in here as zero and it's gonna, it's zero, I think from previous that I didn't know like how much, that we were going to be either pushing toward, I think the in, that would also be maybe like grants. Like we don't really have a grant line right now. So I didn't know what our plan was. So I left it at zero. It may be that, you know, and it's cool. also the strategic plan. If there's like, you know, if we're like with part of the strategic plan is like, we're going to put in like $10,000 sponsorship as one of the goals, then I'm happy to insert that in. But it's definitely, I think we haven't really pushed toward sponsorship income. And um, well, and I'll add that, you know, the our capacity is limited, as you know. And so I think that the energy that, you know, could go into grant writing and that uh, is going into the, the van advocacy work and, and getting money that way and, and really pushing as a collective. Uh, and then if you know whatever happens with that, I think that the the grant writing and fundraising is is on the horizon. Whatever uh, decisions made after that, I'll just answer CJ's question: Is that that the audit is is within the consultant is sixteen thousand, right? So that yes, yes, that ten thousand dollars from the audit that was voted on is in there, is in the consultant. Great, thank you. I have a question. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's. For this part of the the meeting, but you've referenced a few times about what what Van is advocating for, and like there's a new ask and getting people to sign on and stuff. Is there? How, how do we know? Do we know? Like uh, we the board, do we know what Van is advocating for? What? Yes, what and I mean? I uh, was prepared for that, and I'm glad you asked that. So um, <laughs> my notes are in the other room, but I have oh. yeah. In a second, maybe I could do give you the talking points, and I'd be happy to forward everybody the two documents that I am sharing with organizations, which is the short form of the bill that is being reintroduced and the kind of summary of like vans. So in a second, maybe I'll explain, is that okay? So now I was gonna say inside our board Google Drive, the short form of the community media fund and as also like the summary and all the, the longer text is in there. So you can definitely peruse at your leisure. And I think then if we can also upload the van letter that you want to share. Yeah, I think. To um, the talking yeah, Jim, I, could I, you I, throw I, those into the chat window? Sure. 
it might be better to just see the two documents, which is, um, and I can do this to you, Jim. Jim. This is the, this is the, the $10 million ask? Right, is okay, so right? is there a moment, um, do we have a second I can explain it? Um, is that okay? Are we at, oh, I think so we're I kind guess, of in the van section. So I was gonna say, to maybe to close off the finances, um, is I think that's, you know, I think that's all. And if you have questions, definitely email us or let us know. Or if you want to sit down and go over it, we're happy to do it. It is the first draft budget. So that we wanted, we figured we all needed some time to cogitate over it. So right. and it's, a, it's a preview we haven't gotten in the past. So thanks for that. It gets us a little ahead of ourselves in a good way. Share these two to start. They're in office and a sense of gen in the inbox. Oh, will you send it to the office e email? Is that what you're on? Yeah. Yeah. You okay. can see. So there's two documents. I think these are the most clear, wrap your head around it. So, okay. I met with Lauren Glenn Davidian, who's, um, and we'll stick this into our extended, like, uh, band part of the Dakota Director's Report. So I met with Lauren Glenn Davidian, who's the uh, former executive director of CCTV, Town Meeting TV, Channel 17. CCTV mm -hmm. Center for Media and Democracy, which houses Town Meeting TV, you know, Center 17. Anyways, in Burlington. <laughs> and she's been the real uh, powerhouse and, and um, like, carrier of all of this effort and has really led, along with Action Circles, who's the lobbyist uh, group that Van has hired to kind of, like, hold our hand through the... Um, the uh, experience here. And um, anyway, so uh, this is, I guess, the the um, elevator pitch. So Van has um, asked for the last three years, you can see on the PDF, um, we've asked for an appropriation. And, I, and I, uh, I'm a little fuzzy as like where the, it's come from each time, but like, so the appropriation, um, was for the similar argument that the revenue has dropped slowly mm -hmm. statewide. And so that in 2022, FY 2022, we were, the request was 300,000 and we got it. In FY 23, it was 600,000 and we got it. And the recent request was a million and we got it. The plan is to ask for a million one more time and to reintroduce the, the, uh, Community Media Public Benefit Fund Bill, okay? And now this is where it gets a little confusing. What is the Public Media be Public Benefit Fund Bill? So I'll just read the, this a little bit, but the bill would establish a new Community Media Public Benefit Fund funded by communication service providers in the state to ensure equitable and sustainable financial support for local education government access organizations in Vermont. How it works is based on the 2020 <clears throat> van study. So in that study, which is also available, and we can share that, the suggestion was that if you added a whole attachment fee of say $10, this is just kind of like the math that they used. Yeah. I was like, remember that we are recording. Right, to right. To be played on the channel. Right. So I think like this is, but you can, uh, this can be shared with anybody. So, and this is, this is just uh, where, this is just where we're at. So yes, thank you. Uh, we can go to executive if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, we're not really saying anything that yeah, isn't already yeah. public. Um, so this is just a, this is just the, the summary of the, of, of the, the bill and where it's at is, you know, if, if, for example, it was a $10 whole fee attachment, you would end up with four point $5 million mm -hmm. if, say, there was 400 polls in the state. I think it's kind of unknown how many polls there are in the state, so there would need to be uh, a study done and, and figure that out. But collectively, right now, through cable revenue, all of the organizations get about $7 million. So the idea is that, uh, and then the details on like how it would work, obviously, is yet to be determined. So the idea is that, that if the $7 million from cable revenue continues to drop, and then we secure that 4.5 million, that it would be, wouldn't be, it wouldn't equal 7 million, but it would be closer. 
it would be closer and it would be a replacement for long-term funding. So, so we're thinking that supporting this endeavor is a better way spent yes. than writing grants. Is that yeah, it? yeah. I mean, because this is a this is a uh, a huge endeavor, really, because yeah. it would affect everybody in and and and, and uh, secure a long term funding. And under that ban, what ban is doing? How how does or how how do the organizations themselves within that umbrella? How does the brand, how is the brand displayed, right? Because that's because whoever controls that, the man itself has the most power, right? In terms of the state. Is that right? Is so that, that's that's another thing that's kind of happening right now, but uh how van is is organized right now, it's just a 501c6. Okay. It's, and it, so it's just so actually like when the appropriations are handed over, they're really handed to like Media Factory or to CCTV, mm -hmm. and then they're distributed. So Van, that's one thing that is is in the works. Like we, Van is uh, hoping to form like a foundation to accept uh, appropriations or accept grants, um, and then we're working on that. So, but as like a, how is it talked about? I mean, like the I think the idea is that Van is advocating for and continues to advocate and for the 24 individual organizations mm -hmm. yeah. it's a membership organization it's an association so just like from from my my question comes from the spot that uh i, I mean i i would just i i think that they're always pushing for things and it would be good like as board members if, if someone happened to ask us about right um, well what is what what is you know I don't know. If we got some sort of question. We need to at least know what they're asking about. I agree. Yeah, and I, I'm definitely curious about. Well, if we're if we're asking, if we're going to continue asking for more, yeah. what are, are we are we saying that we're doing something different mm -hmm. or um, in some way more beneficial to the state than what we're already doing? Or are they just giving us money to just keep on keeping on? Right. I think that that's the idea of why it's it's being branded as a public benefit. And there is there's an argument that. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm forgive me, I'm not a mathematician, but like on how it would actually be a more equitable uh, charge uh, to the companies that are involved. So, mm -hmm. you know, with the exception of CUDs, every attachment, uh, uh, what was the language here? Sorry, every um, that pull every, attachment. Yeah. So every every. Uh, the bill would impose a charge on all companies that deliver commercial voice, cable, internet, and wireless services, with the exception of newly created CUDs. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, and you were talking about a woman that was sort of in, involved in it all up in Burlington. Right, Lauren Glenn. Yeah, right. and if it helps, we're talking about telephone poles, and the pole attachment charge is there's a pole owner for each of these phone poles. <laughs> and then electric is always at the top. And then below that you have, uh, you know, cable and telephone and fiber optic and everybody pays the pole owner an attachment fee. And the pole owner has to allow you to get on their poles because they're in public rights of way generally. So this is just a quick tutorial on like, what is this pole attachment fee? And, What's the rationale? And then the CUDs, these are the um, the union districts that are being created to bring fiber optic, uh, community fiber optic network mm -hmm. to the various communities in Vermont that are underserved for high speed internet. Um, and then the only other player that's sort of not really being tapped right now is there's an increasing availability of wireless, you know, 5G broadband. And so far, they seem to be uh, being left alone. Is that correct, Chris? Um, I mean, I'm only able to share the information that I have, you know, that that I'm aware of, you know, as far as what Van is currently working on. So, if if that, if you know, the if that's a company that is attaching to the pole, I think that that would be part of the umbrella. And the pole fee mm -hmm. is part of. Part of the legislation that is going to be reintroduced, right? And I'm and I'm just forwarding the like the very uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty like 
bird's eye view and it's just a summary of the community media public benefit fund and then you see the second thing is like a handout which is called a legislative update that basically explains and kind of where how we got to this point. And, and the polls and the way they would subdivide it is in terms of region and how much polls are in the region versus um, service and content. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, that I think that's yet to be determined. You mean like okay. how the funds would be distributed? Well, yeah, because yeah, exactly. Like let's like say that Montpelier covers the state house. Right, right. Right, versus other regions that don't, you know. You wouldn't yeah. think it would be the number of polls that would determine it because the Northeast Kingdom would have a tremendous no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Per person. <laughs> per person, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's, that's so a great question. I mean, those are questions that should be asked, right, and answered, and who's going to fight for what, right? Yeah. Who's going to say that this is the way we're going to do it? Who votes on that, right? Yeah. All of that. I was going to say, because, I mean, it's similar to how, like, we have this one million appropriations amount that we're like, because they're looking at budget, it seems like, you know, I, whether in terms of how much do we, how much content do we provide for all the other ones, it hasn't really come into like the yeah, equation yeah, yeah. and whether that, you know, us covering the state house, like all this, when they, I think they put out a report for the VMX of, you know, how many pieces of content we're uploading and how many people are taking it. And I think that that gives them, and it may be something that later on, comes down the line, I think, but it sounded like what they were doing is pretty much how they were doing the appropriations is it may be similar to how they'll do the fund, like split out the mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, I think it seems like, you know, whether, I don't know how detailed they have to be in legislature to say, you know, this is yeah. our exact plan of how we're going to split it out. Or if they're just like, we just want to focus on getting that pull attachment passed and amount yeah. that's associated with it. And I think there will be times where we'll be coming to you and who you know, because, you know, there's always that time where we say, can you come to the state house to right. vouch for us or like to testify and say, and I think especially if this is coming in front of one of the, the if it's coming in front of the legislature, we also might be like, okay, and that's where the letters that we're, I think, pulling together that Christopher was talking about, we may be like, if you have organizations also that you know of, that know us and love us, that we should be contacting definitely let us know and we can um yeah i think for now um it might be best if i reach out to the organization um and then i can kind of like field questions to through the through the folks that know even more about it than i do so if you do have you know an organization that you feel like oh you know montpelier live should definitely sign this letter um mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we lost Pat. You can go ahead and time just check, eight, time check eight o'clock. It sounds like with the ledge up and running in the winter, we'll get more details and more activity on this topic um, getting clarified. Thank you. Um, yeah. We are um, in co director's report. And I think that's it. That takes us to the end. Yeah. <laughs> well, good job, you guys. Yeah, great job. Um, motion yeah, I, I motion if I to could... accept or more more discussion. I have one thing I'd like to discuss. Um, Go ahead. I don't know if it belongs inside or outside. So you guys let me know. I'd like to see the co-directors and so on brainstormer just come back with some proposed sponsors. It's an obvious thing. A lot of people love being listed as a sponsor to public television. It's, uh, it raises your community visibility in a nice, positive way. And uh, it's a great way to build rapport with the community. Though we already have, but, you know, always good to have more. How do you all feel about that? Can we put that challenge out to you? Well, I think it's a great idea, but I think, and I don't know what the, there's a lot of rules about accepting sponsorship money from what I understand. But if we could... Um, advertise them in a different way than just perhaps on a, as a tagline on a video, um, maybe in any ads that we run or something. I don't know if that's against their rules, but I think you'd get a lot more people stepping up if there was a way to highlight them more. Um, is there a rule against it, uh, co-directors? I think that there's there may be We'll look into it's it's I feel like it's a little bit rummaging about because it doesn't necessarily like the policies and procedures document that I've looked at. It's about 
sponsorship for community producers, not necessarily for us as an organization. So I feel like I'll probably have to hunt through the files a little bit more to see about looking at what counts if we can do for sponsorship for the organization, not necessarily the spot. Like, I feel like those rules would probably be different. So we can research that Absolutely. and come back with what think, can we do. So, And then I think also um, the difference between gains and maintenance. I mean, I keep saying again, you know, and I, we've, of, right? In terms of how we- yeah, We've we, talked about Tony. Yeah. Sorry. We've talked about Tony Campos. He's got some kind of a separate um, organization where he can accept funds because I know he charges. Uh, my um, long story, but a uh, group I was working with him and we wound up having to pay for the stuff that he was doing for us. And I just about had a stroke, um, <laughs> but he's got some kind of separate entity that allows him to do that. So I don't know if that's something we could do as well. I was envisioning just public broadcasting service type things where, you know, it's the Kempe Foundation supporting Masterpiece Theater. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it is. It's usually attached to an individual program. That's, right. that's I think, Jen's yeah. response. I, we I, could I, help facilitate um, programmers finding sponsors, um, but just messing around with a short list and then just bringing this to strategic planning. It's a timely conversation right. for November. Because yeah. I know um, the 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 gentleman that does the disability show, he has a lot of sponsors, yeah, um, and I I don't th I think that money goes to him. I'm assuming I don't think it goes to Orca, does it? It goes to the show. It goes yeah. So, and, what we're talking about is bringing money into Orca as an entity, and, and PBS itself has a lot of public sponsors. Um, we could talk to Pat Moulton. Ah, that'd be good. Great. Yeah, I think that um, I know that if you look at the town meeting TV newsletter is sponsored by local businesses. And so, I mean, so you could you could stick them in places. I think we would probably want to start with some kind of like sponsorship menu or package or something. Um, but I also I also think um, regardless of, of, of money that we receive or not, I think it's also important to every time we service communities like what you did with um the breakout sessions right for the floods is to get you know get the blurbs from the people of the organizations like say thank your community without you we could never have done right. this because that is that that's like money also we, we use that when you're applying, applying for grants you know, these are testimonials of people you know this is what this is the work we've done these are the testimonials and that's important because yeah. i have written grants and gotten money because i collect every time i shoot something for farmers or whatever i get their test their the blurbs, yeah, always. That's good. In yeah, a letter, yeah. and I have it there, and I keep it, and yeah. I use it. That's awesome. Chris, what are you doing with Montpelier Alive? Because that uh, Katie Trouts has taken that organization to the moon and back, and 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 you've got a product. A, I I forgot the, what you called it. You've got something going with Montpelier Alive. Yeah, we always do. I mean, we we work with Katie pretty closely, and you know, Katie was part of the uh, organizers of the community forums, and so yeah, we, you know, her effort has been mostly towards that since the summer. But um, the I think the note in there was about the projector committee. They uh, oh, Katie right. and some of her board members asked Chad and I if we could help out uh, just using finding a better usage of their. Uh, projector for art events or downtown. Yeah, because that alone is great PR for Orca because she has just done yeoman's work. I just love that woman. Yeah, and, and really hopefully, you know, she'll sign our letter for Van too. So I think yeah, that that's, yeah. that's the, the, the push right now until the holidays. Good. Good. Um, so, this is again. The only other thing I wanted to note uh, is looking at the Vermont Access Network right up there on Google Drive. And it says key legislature, legislators have encouraged Van to develop short-term funding requests while continuing to work towards the longer-term policy goal. Um, the or ORCA is a unique peg because of its coverage of the, the state capital. Right. And mm -hmm. the only other thing I'd like to ask the co-directors to return to the board with is a proposed, what if you had an extra, you know, 50 or 100 or 200,000, hmm. 
how could you improve and, and continue to expand public participation and coverage of the rulemaking and lawmaking in the particularly legislative and um, executive branches, but there's a real lack of understanding of the judicial, judicial branch. And that's undergoing some, some changes. For sure. So it, it seems like they've kind of, if I'm like, if, if that, does that put you in any conflict with Van if you were to go and make a direct request for state house coverage that the legislature might agree would be worth investing in? We have to check on that, yeah. But I'm not sure. Because your budget is being put together and you can, you know, it's a draft budget. That means your business development thoughts, if you will, could be put in there as well. You could say, if we had an extra quarter million hmm. oriented towards, you know, coverage of the, of the making of the sausage, hmm. here's where we spend it. And then go to the legislature and say, here it is. You said so. Here we are. Yep. Um, this, so we used to have very kind of exclusive coverage of the state house, but with COVID, every committee has kind of built its own right. um, video infrastructure through the web. So there's there is there is that wrinkle. Our sort of exclusivity isn't as exclusive as it was. I would think if they actually had that kind of money, they do it themselves, knowing the legislature. Because <laughs> you're right, they've got the infrastructure already set up. Except if it's public access and they're all doing yeah. their own thing, how yeah. do you find it? I mean, what you're trying to do is to, now they may not really want this, but they should <laughs> at least pay lip service to, exactly. yeah, the citizenry can get involved. They can participate. I and think it's, it's really amazing. embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great yeah, because I think those... every committee has a YouTube channel now. They do now, which is which they is do. all new ish. Yeah, and it's all taped, and 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 yeah. you can have access to it through Joint Fiscal. I'm not Joint Fiscal. So Fisco, should Orca you. go and say we'd like to bring all your YouTube channels into a single uh, browsable thing in in Orca? They might like that. Did we? Um, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we'd have to think about that, but. There's a way to just like link their channels onto our page. I mean, it wouldn't, it would take not a lot. Of, yeah. I mean, an hour. Yeah. <laughs> mm, it's, yeah. yeah I mean, it's it's a, like, <laughs> I think that's the other bit. It's, you know, whether how possessive of, they are about their channel and their branding and how, like, if they may not necessarily, like, we could ask the link, but I think the other bit is they, there is a ton of footage. And I think even when we were just like, we sent we sent our camera operators to the ones that had bad coverage where the cameras were in a weird spot. But in terms of like being able to say there's so much data and like what agenda items are covering. And so that curating might be like, even though we can have it be a link and be like, okay, here's more of their channel. But in terms of whether that is actual like a value, I think it's, we, I don't know how, like, because we could say we have people looking and we, you can click to it and we can have that link, but in terms of curating or like to somehow make it manageable, I think it's a huge, that might be a huge endeavor because there's so much, like, if you just look through the daily agendas for them, like when we go through it, it's like, there's so much different thing. And it's, I think it may be, we'd have to be, I think, more creative about the value that we could add to it because they have they do have that video structure kind of there. And a lot of people, especially since COVID, have been going to it and watching it live. So I think it would be, it may be some of those other groups that aren't at the state house. So like the judicial, some, I think we've gotten inquiries from the Department of Public Service to do some of their evidentiary hearings and cover those. So, and it's like, we've been starting, I've been looking at like the listening sessions that they're putting out. I think we just covered one about that was over at the high school that the Department of Public Service was doing a listening tour. So those may be where we can be like, we can help you go out to these smaller locations mm -hmm. and do the listening tour and maybe facilitate their Zoom and get them out. Because I think everyone's pushing for community engagement and that's where probably where we might be able to provide some sort of service yeah. or some sort of help. And, and you've, so, got, and you've got the Green Mountain Care Board on the uh, their public meetings coming up. 
Yes. And so those on the calendar. So yeah. And I think they are still virtual. So that's the other thing is like, you know, is it like we record it and we kind of have it available, but they've also started to do their own YouTube channel too. So I think we just have to be creative of how can we help their community engagement process, which is really about going out, hopefully going out to the public too. Well, okay. just consider that right now, Orca is the fourth estate for Montpelier for the state uh, process of making laws and that you know, we're part of the checks and balances system. So hearing that they've all boiled their own um, part of my suggestion also is they may like it because it's a way of saying it's retaining the checks and balances inherent in a fourth estate. Yep. And it makes it easy. Everybody just goes to one place, starts browsing Orca's listing. How are people finding it now? I think that the state yeah, has a very good website. Yeah. So yeah. you can okay. search representative you can search by topic you can search by witness so that's what we kind of do because when we follow certain topics and try to then we and when we do the lower thirds like it's really nice and you can they take you to their site their web page or their youtube channel so their website is actually really handy and we use yeah, it all it the time cool. to that's do smart. the scheduling it's pretty robust and it does link to every uh youtube page too pretty easily if you want to find their Awesome. Let, let me make the graphics match up what's on the agenda on the website um which isn't which is harder than it sounds <laughs> so we do try to coordinate yeah. so that our topics or our text matches up so if they're watching it on tv that they're like oh that was the agenda item they can go to their website and search for that same phrase and come to that same agenda item and so we've been trying to match it up so that that gets used. Yep. I'm just thinking, like, would my grandmother know how to find this? I don't. So that's all. Just trying to preserve the, the how to find it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can definitely, I, I, I think, like, I don't know about CJ's grandmother, but to me, it definitely, like, makes more sense that I would I would like either Google it or go to the state website to to look mm -hmm. for it as opposed to going to work up personally. <laughs> but yeah it's a question of how much value we would add. Yeah. Um got a 815 time check. So are we ready to move to uh strategic planning update? Are we did we that, I think accept we accepted the, the yeah, if that's um, within the co-director's report, or do we need to accept co-director's report to get there? I think we, we need accept to accept it. Okay, did we accept the report? We did not. Okay. We, do we need to vote on it? Uh, I'm, if strategic planning is separate from co-director's report, we do. It's separate. All right. So we're looking for a motion to accept co-directors. CJ moves to accept. I heard CJ moving. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Pat. Firsted and seconded to accept the uh, uh, co-director's report. Uh, indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. Aye. And strategic planning. Okay, so let me keep this short and sweet. Uh, so I think we're going to pull up um, a document just to take a look at. So as you know, um, the effort is is towards the retreat that's coming up so that's why we're really excited about all the in-person participation but um i think that we wanted to just uh mention two things three things so i was gonna say um i'm gonna just share so sure. we all did our our policy circles and our circles in general sorry and then we just wanted to make sure that um I think across the board, like, are you all seeing it? Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're not seeing it. Oh, right. Okay. But here. Oh, sorry. There we so, go. so we just wanted to confirm the mission. I think there was some circles where we 
got feedback that there might still be some confusion about the mission. And we just wanted to make sure that we were all agreed about the mission before we went to the retreat so that what we were hoping for the strategic planning retreat is that we would get a more concrete document that was about like, we're hoping to have something that's more about like benchmarks and metrics. So that we thought if we could make sure that we were all on board about the mission so that we could tell Nathan that that's clear and we're moving forward from there. And I think the other bit that came up across from the circles was rebranding. And we just wanted to make sure that we discussed it and um, address whatever questions maybe are coming with that. Um, so the first bit I think is, sorry. I don't know what happened. Yeah, so maybe uh, just like Jen said, if we could just wrap our head around one more time on the mission so that uh, we can spend more of our time working on the the document itself, the strategic plan. Um, can everyone see that? I can read it out loud. So the what we landed on and then, which is almost the exact same as the suggestion was that we add the word free. So it, um, I'm gonna read this suggestion because that was kind of where we left off. So Orca Media facilitates engagement in local communities and government by providing free access to media production, training and distribution. And for those of you that don't remember, this was like a very uh, uh, nicely worded compared to, to the previous mission, which is available on our website, uh, long, run on sentence. And so this was us kind of condensing what we felt like were the tiers of what we do, the three tiers being production, training and distribution. Um, and then, yeah. And, and <laughs> no, get finished. I um, since I'm new and I've, I've just sort of been looking at this, the only question that comes to mind and it may make the sentence too long is engaging who, who, who are we engaging? In local communities, is that anyone? To be everyone. So well, I yeah, that's, that, that's, but... that's a great question, and you're right because the mission is like, who's our client? What are you solving, and how? Right, or so. So that's like usually the question you're answering. So I would say that you know the fact is that we serve our service area, right? So anybody in our service area can use us for non-commercial. Me, uh, media production training and distribution services. So the engagement in local communities and government is trying to encapsulate the, you know, at, at the end of the day, we still manage a public and education and government access three different channels, right? And mm -hmm. that is, where, that's where the, the, you know, the idea of, of PEG. So it's like, we're, we're still a PEG organization. And so that local communities and government anybody in our service area, we're trying to facilitate engagement in those local communities and government, which local communities uh, obviously includes schools and everything else like Montpelier Live and all the fun stuff that happens, protests and celebrations by providing free access to media production, training and distribution. So I think that we off like, rather than name things, so like, because the facilitating engagement is like it is everyone we want to engage anyone and everyone in whichever way they want to because we're just provide we provide the training and the equipment so that's where it's like you know by put pinning any by adding words or any like like to say you know do we it seems like if we say everyone and anyone but isn't that everything like so if we didn't include it then you say oh you know is that me yes it's you is that him it's he, him it's them it's so i think the opposite feedback i feel like uh that you communicate more by like trying to be less but by having by clarifying less you encompass more um i think there should be a period after government and the entire rest of the line should go away hmm so I, I'd like to ask a clarifying question. The, the the verbiage in yellow is our present mission, correct? No, I think that yellow is, we when we did the strategic planning process before Rachel left, we came with this agreement. I think we had it up on the board. Yeah, but was, we never voted on it? No. So I think, no, we, like that was the, it was, yeah. that was what was kind of, oh, 
agreed upon about that time. And I think time has kind of um and like more cogitating came back with other things. You're, and so you're that's saying why. it was agreed upon but not voted upon? No, I think we all like there was just kind of like no disagreement. I guess maybe what it was was no disagreement at that time that we were like, okay, we'll keep but it in. We kept kicking the can down the road yeah. and we we're like, oh, we'll really dig into this <laughs> later. Yeah, and so no, like it's later. Later. So no, I would I would we're having circle question meetings the way the system of making it. now the time we do that. Um <laughs> Well, and that's the thing, in a regular board meeting with strategic planning right on the horizon. Yeah. Well, so, maybe that maybe that we, we just we we don't have time to do this right now. No. And and I I think that if if maybe we just come back to Nathan, I think we're kind of trying to answer Nathan's question so that as he prepares the agenda for the retreat, he's prepared. Are are we spending time on the mission statement or not? And it sounds like we still are. Well, so. Can I have a comment yeah, or a question? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we could ask Nathan to send us, send you, send us questions we should be asking our, ourselves about that. Yeah, let's write that down. That's good. Yeah, okay. Right? You're, you're. And one more thing. I think what Chad says, I kind of agree with him in many ways, like that closing it off and not being very super specific about it might be the way to go so but but that's something that we could discuss again i think i think having um nathan send us questions kind of guiding us to see you know what we come up with so yeah the the, the programs that we fiscally sponsor are supposed to align with our mission so tell me how the green mountain film fest provides media production training and distribution it doesn't I agree. unless there's a period yeah. after government and it does engage the local communities so I, I agree i do agree so i guess that's the thing it's like the fiscal sponsorship i feel like the green mountain film festival came to us and there wasn't a lot of like thinking about should it align does it like it makes sense like because we do kind of similar things and but whether it actually aligns with our mission mm -hmm. i don't think was really kind of pondered it was kind of like they needed someone and we we're like we can step in to help and so that's where I think that fiscal sponsorship question, whether that's something that we as an organization will be doing is I think hasn't been discussed also, because I think at that point, it's like, I don't know that or ORCA as an organization really has part of it as this, this fiscally sponsoring kind of entity. That's not. So I, I, I could make a very easy case for the Green Mountain Film Festival being a form of media distribution, but do we really want to get into this conversation at this time? <laughs> so no. <laughs> I actually thought we had I actually thought we had voted on this mission. Um and uh I guess we had a general agreement but didn't pull the trigger. I think we were going to Historically, but... so stop so. in the spring. All right. Dave, do you want to ask your question? I would like to say something. Please. Uh I believe that. What our statement does is probably going to be more controversial in the era that we're now in. We just canceled a speech by somebody who was trying to explain the the, the plight of Palestinians at at, uh, at UVM, yeah. and they just canceled the talk. So now, even talking about what's going on in the world using the media gets to be a huge potential controversy. And, and actually needs extra security when it's being shown. So I'm just saying that however we let the community and whoever it is speak out, we need to know what we as an organization feel we can do to support the voice of something at this point that some people are so threatened by that they're actually cutting free speech from places like Harvard and UVM and telling people they can't do that lecture because it's going to be too dangerous to the rest of the community. Okay. So I'm just saying that we need to be aware of all that when we make our mission statements out. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. This this part of the, the values is, I'm not sure if it's the mission statement or the values or the, uh, but that's ab absolutely true. Um, can I say something? I, um, I feel in the mission statement, for me, what lacks is um, what's the purpose, like, okay, we we facilitate and we provide these, but for what? What's the, the intention at the end? It's 
for the betterment of the community for like uh, I, I, I feel we, we there is a lack of that like what's the at the end what's the purpose of doing this service to the community right it's a great point mm -hmm. to what end yeah Seems like we have to do a lot more work before we get to that place. And that we'll is see. just what it is. And that's, yeah. So, and so Car Carlos's suggestion that um, co-directors uh, send this off to Nathan for kind of thought, kind of help us formulate thought questions to push this to the finish line. Uh, Are people so, comfortable with that as next step? Yes. Yeah, yes. I, 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 Yep. So just yeah, and go ahead. Okay. So I just also with the rebranding, I think that that was the other thing that came through, and we just wanted to like we did talk to Nathan about that, and he also thought we thought it'd be maybe not the strategic plan if that was unless there was. I think the rebranding was a question of if there's harm being done with our name or our brand, we definitely want to address that. Or if it's more of another reason that we would want to rebrand. So we just kind of wanted to say that it is, you know, unless people feel strongly about one needing to rebrand or wanting to rebrand, we thought it'd be better at the next, like this would not be the strategic plan to do that. Yes. So we just wanted to put that out there also and if there was questions or comments about it <laughs> about the rebranding question and and maybe i'll just throw in my personal opinion that i've actually been in favor of rebranding for a long time but i i do feel like that could be like the next strategic plan when was the strategic plan prior to this one so we would know how long we're going to be waiting? Uh, Michael. Well, I was going to say that there was the previous, but I think this strategic 20 plan. 20 years ago? <laughs> so this strategic plan, I think it was discussed about short-term versus long-term right, goals. So and a... so we are thinking short-term around three years. And we would imagine that we're setting metrics and benchmarks for three years out and that it would be re- done or reimagined in the next three years right. and whether right. that becomes five years or a different range but we were thinking like this one also would be more towards short term versus long term is there a way that there's, we i mean there's some history with pegs rebranding and like channel 17 obviously when their channel moved they went to town meeting tv um in white river what is now called jam jam uh, junction access media they, I'm not sure what precipitated that, but they had a really successful uh, rebrand. I don't know what their initial reason for doing so was, but I think um, there's 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 good examples of of Vermont Pegs doing it. Um, Is this something? That yeah, I wouldn't just do it just because it sounds like a fun thing to do. Like purpose being yeah. dot dot yeah. dot. I Plus, you'd that. have to. You'd have to consider it in the budget because you need money to rebrand. Yeah, everything, right. You're going to do something like that. Yeah. I think these are both grenades that I threw in with the mission statement and the rebranding because I just like, I kept waiting for the right time. I kept feeling like, oh, like being told it wasn't the time to discuss it. But I think that both things are in intrinsically related the mission yep. statement and the branding, and both of the uh, main branding uh, uh rebranding that we mentioned like jam and like the media factory both pivoted to be uh more actively engaged in their communities and have seen a big benefit from that i think that it's like a chicken egg thing when we're talking about um sort of rethinking of what we do um so that's that's just what i say about the rebranding i i think if we can codify okay in three years we'll um we're going to do another strategic plan as part of the strategic planning process or something but i still think that rebranding we don't have to wait those three years right that's something that we could do we could budget for and roll it's, out yeah it's it's separate, by yeah. Little, or also attacking within subcommittees like a specific group yeah that's good that, yeah. like a, a subgroup and then the other thing is reach out to the media through these media centers yeah, to together. Them and talk to and ask them how did that rebranding go what did you do I mean, get that feedback and work off of Absolutely. that. Did that really help? Yeah. You? 
And what did it cost and how much, you know, out, out of oh, yeah. outside expertise did you need to actually pull that thing off? And, um, and I'll add that Nathan did mention that, you know, uh, we'd still like to do a community needs assessment as part of this strategic yes. plan. So that could be something that we kind of like, that we just, uh, when we're kind of rolling out this strategic plan and we, we like lock this in, we go into the community and say, what do you think of Orca Media? And a couple of questions could be like, what does Orca stand for? Or what is it? What do you think of when you think of Orca Media? Or how do you recognize us? Or, you know, and those, those to kind of spend the next couple Absolutely. of year or two thinking about, okay, who do we want to be? How do we want to brand ourselves? Yeah. I think we're yep. here, I'm actively working on it. I mean, that's the way I see it. Yeah. Putting yeah. it on the books. Yeah. Or so, the, hearing the feedback from the, the I think that's a great place to start. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm changing 832. 832. So I, I think we're almost done with the strategic plan. I think it's maybe we don't need to, to spend too much time on this, but we just wanted to uh, to say that like the last thing was that uh, we are hoping to create, you know, all this hard work that we've done. We're hoping that in the end, we will have uh, some kind of uh, document that is that is legible and and shareable and it's it's beautiful and all the things and so I think that that was what Jin's point was too. So we we're working our way there and all of this kind of messy stuff that you're seeing behind the scenes, it's getting there. But it's it, you know we're looking at the Kellogg Hubbard document as inspiration. So we're hope we just wanted to reiterate that out of the retreat, we're we're hoping to get this. Does that make sense? Sorry. So I think, and then to end it. We will send a list. And so granted, it's like, it's an off month, but we'll try to get you the agenda for the retreat. But before that, some list of questions that Nathan can generate for you to think about the mission statement. Is Does that seem, did I get that right of what you all would want from to do the mission thinking? Yeah, I think, okay. you know, what are the things that we need to consider in terms of that mission statement in order to create it? Right, what are the parts? You know, I don't know, some prompt, something, whatever it is to kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and we'll have three hours and we won't have a, these these type of agenda items to run through. There'll be no board meeting nuts and bolts to do. Okay, so that wraps up that. If, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so I guess, I don't know, motion except strategic planning uh, discussion or we just roll right into old business. Um, I'll, uh, I, piece of old business. Um, I shared in the last board meeting that um, conversation with Mike Doyle, he, he likes the idea of um, board member emeritus, non-voting board member emeritus. But I don't think Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we actually made a motion and and voted that through. I think I just reported out and it just Ooh. didn't actually make it. Can I make a motion to recognize? Yeah, thank you. As board member emeritus or comedian. has has made the motion uh, to. Uh, I said Carlos Diaz seconds. And that's Carlos. So all those in favor of um, codifying uh, Mike Doyle's move to non-voting non uh, board member emeritus here, here, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And aye. opposed? Great, that's unanimous. So that's, that's now done, official. Uh, sorry, that was my oversight last meeting. Other old business and or new business? <clears throat> And there's plenty of new business on the horizon with the strategic planning. So we'll be seeing that agenda uh, sometime soonish. Yes, mm -hmm. I will aim for within the week. We'll uh, we'll give you. that timeline timeline to Nathan that to try to have that within the week. Not Great. it may not be this week, but maybe by next Tuesday ish. Yeah. So sure, sure, sure. With with plenty of time to digest. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. So can is there any of the old business that we can cross off that it's been completed? So I'll take it off the old business for the next agenda. Is so would Mark win? Are we still thinking to invite him? Not I guess the October meeting, but 
the December meeting or? That is also budget. I don't know, it might make more sense kick. I think it's it continues to be something we'd like to happen. Um, not sure if December makes sense. CJ, what do you think? Give him a give him a December invite in twenty minutes, or we can do that. Um, December tends to be a period when people are starting to think about holidays. Yeah, and I do want to point out our fourth uh, Tuesday in December is the twenty sixth. So I'm just going to say we'll be the nineteenth. It will be third. Will be third Thursday that that board meeting. I may not be able to be there for that. And even that might meeting. be tricky. Yeah, CJ mm. needs to be there. Yeah, I think we're looking January. Um, what I am hoping to do. Uh, we we need possible. we need to keep it in December because we're passing a budget. So is, are we uh, looking at um, the twelfth? Get get away from the holidays as much as we can. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so that's doing, second doing, Tuesday. Yeah, we're doing second it's, Tuesday in December. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, second Tuesday is the uh, EC Fiber board meetings. Gotcha. Um, CJ, do you think for the 19th you could drop a report like you did tonight if you can't make yep. that one? Yep, I can drop a, a report. I'm not sure. What are we trying to accomplish um, with Mark? I mean. Yeah, that's another thing. What if we, I, I, I would say, yeah, let's let's push that into the new year. Um, there's um, new board, there's new board members. You might just want to give an overview. Yeah. Um, and if you want to have that, what are we trying to accomplish conversation with him? That would that would make some sense. Um, I don't think. OK, <laughs> sounds good. I'm happy to talk with him. Um, I brought him in the first time just to uh, to help with the transition and to give us all a little bit of a picture about how he because he was new to us too. A lot of the work was done with his predecessor and his predecessor's predecessor. Yep. Yeah. I think so I think uh, we could have him come in in the beginning of the year to talk about um, Edward Jones, what its services are, what we are taking advantage of and what we could take advantage of. That might be pretty interesting. Yeah, it sounds good. Was there another old business item you wanted to clear up, Jen? Yeah, so Dave Connor with, I think the sale of the VCFA buildings, I think you were inquiring. So we have sent out an email to VCFA folks to find out, you know, when they have, I think they were still in the process of the sale. So it hasn't been official yet, but as soon as we know, we um, will let you know about who's, I mean, right now, I think it's just the Greenway Institute and the new school. There's still three buildings that I think haven't been decided or sold yet. And I but, think the question was, have we met our new landlord? And we haven't. Okay. okay. Because the yeah. sale hasn't come completed yeah. yet so um could we take that off old snow? Yes, okay <laughs> so okay you'll be the first to know i think that's old business okay yeah. uh let's see any anything else i guess we're sort of in business old or new uh at 840 Oh, has anybody been through an audit before? I have to confess I haven't. And I'm going to be trying to, to get that uh, scheduled. Is if, it's a, if it's a huge um, amount of time, I'll try to push it into the new year. And mom knows? So I guess it varies. I've been through audits and doing the, like, pulling together financial reports for it. So it may be, but because a lot of our stuff is done also with the accountant and our bills, and it's so it, it may be doable. I don't know how, what the scheduling might be with the auditing groups. So whether they're also gonna be packed. And so I would say I'm I'm happy to go with, with, with whatever timeline that it does, if you do wanna try to catch it in this year, but, um, it may be like their schedule may dictate what is available. And it's, yeah. I think it's not a, I don't think we were going to do a full fledged audit, but a financial review, which is like baby audit. So well, that may also. We haven't had an audit done in 
since 20, 2005, was it? I'd have to go back Ooh. through my notes, Rob. Um, we did a baby financial review, and I think it was 2015, something like that. It's been a long time. There's no suspicion or concern at all. It's more of a housekeeping, you know, good business process. So I think I think we have some flexibility. We don't want to, you know, we want to slot it into a time when it doesn't adversely affect the business, and we can just kind of methodically get it done and leave it out there as a, as a hey, check, la, check off good business management practices. And just as an FYI, I think that $10,000 that we, I think, I didn't know if that was for a financial review versus an audit. If that it was left open um, because I didn't have uh, actual current costs, but. I main, can rush. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to see what we've paid in the past? Would that help? Yeah, we actually looked at that, Jen, you and I and Rob. And uh, so the. You know, the, the 10 is low for a full audit. It's high for a financial review. And um, I have a couple of recommendations for people in the area that have, you know, that just come, come recommended. Uh, some of the people that help with the stagecoach stuff. I talked with one of stagecoach's former directors and they said, oh, this woman's wonderful. So it's, you know, it should be a learning experience but it should be one that we fit into a, a low period if we can. You and are we, can that up. Go ahead, Pat. Sorry, are we required to put out bids for like say three, uh, three open bids to get bids? Are we required to do that, this organization? I don't think we're required to, but I think it would be a really good idea to do that. Yeah, if you don't have to do anything seriously for them, we'll just send a letter out uh, to maybe three and see what they what they would give us that would probably help. Mm -hmm. Do an RFP. Yeah, an RFP, right? That makes sense, especially we if we're especially if we're our ten grand is somewhere in between a financial and a true audit. Right, so it makes sense to see what to what people would deal. do for ten grand. <laughs> yep, exactly. Somewhere in there. Um, well, and we may also find people are friendly because we're ORCA. We're a nice 501c community benefit, but we'll find out. Well. How are we doing? Anything else? A motion to adjourn at 844? Yes. All right. I second it. That was Carlos to Chad. To, uh, sounds like we'll call it a very complete meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thanks, uh, awesome. Yeah. Maximize in person on the 14th. We'll be there. And then uh, we'll hold the 19th for December next board meeting. Cool. See you. Nice. Holiday Appreciate party. it, everybody. Night.